Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. Today we're going to be in the OWASP top 10 again. Today is the number 8 out of 10 uh, security risk on the OWASP list. Uh, the name of this risk is insecure deserialization. And this is new to the top 10 actually this year. It was not on the last uh, top 10 list. Um, mainly partly because it's so hard to say. No, I don't think that's actually true, but anyway, but it's a, it, it probably takes the award for the hardest security risk to say on the, on the entire top 10 list. Anyway, insecure deserialization. So many of you may be asking, what is insecure de deserialization? And I guess to talk about that, we need to back up and talk about the concept of serialization. And in web applications, um, you'll have an object. So I'm just gonna write a couple things here. So you'll have an object out here, uh, maybe you have like a maybe you have like a PHP um, you know site or PHP uh, forum that you that you want to host, and you have this object, and then you want and then you need to uh, send it across a network to another place or whatever. Maybe you need to store it in a database or store it in memory or or that kind of thing. Um, the the concept of serialization is taking an object and transferring it or turning it into uh, what I'll call a byte stream or a whoop, stream or a stream of bytes um, so that it can be in the proper format in order to traverse uh, things like an HTTP network um, or so that it can be stored in a database or uh, to maybe saved in memory, that kind of thing. Uh, some of the reasons that you would use serialization uh, is because you can save or persist the state of the object uh, so that whenever you send it across the wire, then you know, then the then the state or the persistence is still there. Um, so when you when you take an object and you turn it into a, a stream of bytes or into byte stream format, then that is the process of serialization. So just like in most things networking, whenever you do something one way and then you send it across, then the person receiving it is going to have to undo that. And so the same is true here. So when you take that stream of bytes or that byte stream and then you turn it back into that uh, that same object, then that, uh, turning it from byte stream and back into object is deserialization. Uh, many, many programming languages uh, today um, utilize this or, or have the capability to serialize objects for the, for the reasons that I stated plus many others. Uh, so this, this concept of serialization, deserialization is out there in web applications today. So the, uh, the question is how could this be a problem and the kind of the bottom line answer is, uh, this gets back to other security risks that we've kind of seen a pattern of as we walk through this top 10. And that is if you take um, uh, untrusted user input and you don't validate that, and then you allow that untrusted user input to be deserialized from byte stream back into object, then an attacker could take advantage of that and, th and insert untrusted, uh, untrusted input and the, this process of deserialization could cause that attacker's, um, you know, uh, attack uh, vector to do bad things to your web application. So let's say, for example, I'll go back to this uh, PHP. Let's say we have a PHP forum. So I'm gonna, um, and it uses these objects. And let's say that as a part of that forum, um, we want to save a, uh, save, I'm gonna say this uh, cookie that includes a lot of different things. And the things that it includes, I'm gonna just write them right here. I'm gonna say uh, user ID. I'm gonna say um, it includes their, uh, maybe their password, or, or I'm, I'm sorry, maybe a role that they have. Uh, maybe it includes like uh, some password hash information, uh, things like that. Uh, maybe the state of the object you know, whatever it is. So let's say that there's a super cookie that is used in this PHP forum um, that includes all these different, uh, you know, attributes of, of what this object would have. Um, all right, so let's say that in a typical scenario, you have um, Alice who is gonna save her cookie here. And so the, the, the uh, proper format would be, you know, Alice, and then her role, let's say, is user, and then maybe her password hash is, you know, one, two, three, four. And then maybe like it, maybe you save some state type information and, you know, that's uh, X, Y, Z, whatever it is. All right. So that's a, that's a typical user in this forum. 
and that's the, that's the super cookie, as it were, um, object that's, uh, that's saved. Um, well, let's say that an attacker comes in and your web application does not uh, validate the user input. Um, and so an attacker is going to be able to insert uh, this serialized data. And then as you deserialize it, then it's going to run some malicious stuff. So let's say that the attacker comes in and is able to put information in this super cookie. And let's say that is Eve. Now they change the user name to Eve, and maybe they change the role from user to admin, and then they keep the same password hash because they know that it, uh, that it gets them in, and then the state is going to be the same as well. All right, so effectively what the attacker has done is taken, taken this object, taken advantage of the fact that it is serialized and of course deserialized, and then when, uh, when they insert this malicious code, as it were, now they have effectively, when this is deserialized because this user input is not validated on the web application side, then they've given themselves admin access into that, uh, into that web application effectively. Um, so what are some of the things that could happen with this? Well, uh, ultimately you could have things like remote code execution that could start happening here. That would be a, a really bad thing, of course. Um, you could do some denial of service attacks uh, using, using uh, vectors like this. Um, any number of things. Uh, a couple of things that I'll say about uh, insecure deserialization is that it's not that easy uh, for most people to find these because it's kind of this niche area. Um, so you would, need to, you would need to really scrub the code. You would need to use a lot of scanning tools and frankly some human intervention as well to say, hey, are we deserializing improper things and doing it in an insecure way? Uh, so this does take a little more human interaction to, uh, to check it out and, and to make sure or to know if you're vulnerable to this. Uh, but nonetheless, it is, it is a, a threat out there. It's on the top 10. Uh, so, uh, so we need to make sure that we're prepared to guard against this. Um, again, I've said it before. I'll say it one more time. The, the main, I, I guess if I, if I could say one thing overall on this, it's do not accept untrusted user input. Uh, or make sure you validate any kind of user input. So, uh, uh, so anyway, so that's, that's just a good approach to take that'll handle actually more than one of the top 10 list security risk. Um, there are some other things that you could do in addition to uh, you know, fixing this on the web application side, of course, and in the code itself, uh, like a web application firewall. You could put that in front of your web application. And so as a potential deserialization, you know, insecure deserialization attack is attempted, at your web application, then a web application firewall could, uh, could notice that and could stop that before it ever gets to your web application. Uh, so that's, uh, that's another thing you could do. Uh, so again, number eight on the list, insecure deserialization. Um, it's out there, it's a problem, it's gaining traction, frankly, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually higher on the list the next time the top 10 comes out. Uh, so, uh, so be aware of this, guard yourself against it, and uh, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video today. Hey, if you like this one, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click the little DC ball here uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will see you guys out there in the community.